Good evening everyone. So tonight, uh, clear skies, I didn't go out last night. Uh, it was very cloudy last night, but tonight I've come back out again, clear skies are out. And uh, I've just set the mount up, I uh, did a full star sense auto line on the default four points, that went no problem. And uh, the mount was pretty close to the polar alignment, uh, having used it uh, uh, recently. Uh, however, I did another um, all-star polar align uh, against Mars and then against Vega and uh, when I did it on uh, Mars it was just a little bit out uh, but when I went and redid it again against Vega uh, I didn't need to adjust it any further which was good. So what I've done is while I'm at Vega uh, I've defocused on Vega and I just wanted to see how far out the, the collimation is. Uh, as I mentioned in the, the video a couple of days ago is I, I just couldn't get Deep Sky Stacker to start uh, to start a line uh, during the stacking and uh, the, the uh, stars were just a little bit stretched, uh, just very slightly stretched uh, in the images of the Dumbbell Nebula in 27. So I thought well, I'll do a quick check the collimation. Uh, so as I say I, def I focused on to uh, Vega uh, as part of the polar alignment and I just left it there. Uh, it was slightly off centre when I finished playing around uh, but I've defocused it there and we can see that the centre uh, shadow uh, from the secondary mirror is pretty good uh, in the centre of the white uh, main disc. So, you know, for the sake of uh, being very slightly out, I'm not going to touch it uh, for the time being. And uh, I'm going to look towards uh, potentially the guiding uh, as being the source of the problems uh, at the moment. And maybe, obviously, uh, it was maybe slightly polar aligned incorrectly uh, the previous time. So that is that. I'm going to bring this back into into focus now. Uh, just using the handset. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the dogs in the background. Though, they're causing chaos. Play fighting on the grass, but never mind. So this is just using the Celestron motor focuser through the StarSense handset. And uh, we'll just see how far... And I can get this. Uh, I'm using the Celestron Edge 11 tonight again, and uh, I'm on the full uh, 2800 millimeter uh, focal length. I haven't got a 0.7 reducer uh, yet, it's on order, but uh, in backlog uh, due to waiting for some other bits and bobs arriving. So I think I'll just pass focus there, and I'll just come back in again. Uh, this is on the ASI 2600 um, one shot colour and uh, I've just set it up there on Astrophotography Tool uh, live view, video view and it's coming in around about one frame a second uh, for the full, uh, I think that's the full pixel, uh, maximum pixel uh, allowed uh, that it's set at, at the moment. So let me just switch the focuser to rate of 1 on the handset, although I could do this through APT, I just got into the habit of doing it on here. And I'm going to point the wrong way, so I'll just pull this in. I don't have a Basin, uh, Batten off mask uh, for this scope, uh, but I'm just looking at the smaller stars in the background while looking at the main star, Vega. It's uh, not looking too bad. And there we can see it just doesn't look quite right. And I don't know why that is. I didn't know if I had the uh, motor uh, sorry, the motor sorry, the mirror locks were too tight or so I screwed them back out. I'm not touching them at all while it's in focusing. They're both loose, so they, nothing should be getting moved. So I'm just going to go straight through. Let's get a little bit better there. I just maybe hadn't focused it correctly. 
That's me moving the problem the whole time. Let's go out there earlier. Maybe it's my old age eyesight starting to creep in. Okay, so that looks a lot better there. Alright, so good. I'm not going to touch that now. Put that down. Okay, so tonight uh, I'm just going to have a flick around to uh, the Dumbbell Nebula again, M27, and just see if that's any better tonight. So let's just shoot around here. I go to target. And off she goes. Let's just see what comes up here. See where we are. Okay, let me come out of the live video view. And let's go to camera. And let's take this just for the test shots. Let's take this down to uh, 15 seconds, just the starting point. Let's go to live view again. Let's close this video window. One of the things that annoys me with APT at the moment is it keeps jumping out of 1x1 one one binning into 4x4 four four binning while in uh, the live view. I wish it would leave it alone where I've set it. Okay, so that's a 15 second exposure uh, on binning 4x4 four four with a gain of 100. And we can see some clear uh, nebulosity uh, in the middle of the image there. So while it's just doing that, let me increase, uh, let me just flip over to, oh, I haven't opened it yet, I was going to say PhD, let's go in here, let's see if we can get, make sure we've got a clear image on the guiding, uh, let's connect all, okay, oh, I wonder if that was it, going to the wrong camera. No, no, it's just a focus shift. HD2, okay, let's go into live view. There we can see we've got some stars. Let's auto select a star. Uh, 13.1 signal to noise, and let's start guiding on that. Let's see what happens. And while the guiding's ongoing there, I'm going to flip over back to APT and increase the time here to uh, 180 seconds. So I'll just finish off its one by uh, four by four at 15 seconds, and then I'll jump across to this 180 uh, one by one, and I'll start an image there. So let's leave this test shot to run for three minutes. While it's doing that, I'm just going to pause recording. Okay, so that was uh, 180 seconds, came in at 100 uh, gain, uh, looking not too bad there. I've just dropped the gain down to 75 for the next test shot, uh, just to see what difference uh, that's going to make. So again, I'll just pause that while it's... Uh, doing its thing. Okay, so that was the gain at, uh, at 75, uh, this image here. It came in a bit brighter, I would expect expected it to be uh, a little bit less uh, with a reduced gain, uh, unless I'm thinking about the wrong way around. Um, now this time, uh, it's currently running another image at 75, but this time uh, I'm going to uh, increase the gain to 125 and just see how, how that comes in. Okay, so that latest exposure that's come in was a 240 seconds at uh, a gain of 100. And uh, on the PhD2, uh, I've been tweaking around a little bit there and the guiding's holding steady around about 0.42 for the time being. So... 
that's not looking too bad. I'm just going to let another couple of exposures come through just to make sure everything's looking okay. Well, the other thing to mention is the cooling. Uh, it's now down to 5 degrees C uh, on the CCD. So we'll see how things settle down. Okay, so the image we've got there is 240 seconds. Uh, with a gain of 100 and uh, this time though I'd never tried it before but uh, I, I did buy one a while ago and uh, never used it because I hadn't got that far yet but I'm using the uh, or I'm trying a better UHCS uh, nebula filter uh, so that was a 240 second uh, with that filter in place and it uh, to me it looks uh, pretty good for a single shot uh, exposure so the guiding it's currently sitting in 0.41, uh, things looking not too bad there, the scale resolution there is plus or minus 4 pixels, uh, everything's behaving itself there, and what I'm going to do now is actually kick off a plan I think. Uh, so one of the other things I was talking about the other night was the, the uh, meridian flip uh, didn't happen. Uh, so this time on the session craft I'm going to do uh, an automatic flip but first I need to start uh, start the plan off and make sure the guiding's all going etc. So that's all done there. Uh, let's go into camera and disconnect the live view and go start once it's ready. Exposure started. Okay. And I don't know why I did that. Let's go to Tools, Guiding, Gear, Guide. Uh, dithering's on, a dithering distance of 1. Uh, it's got control of guiding. And OK. And I can do uh, Make Automatic Flip. I'll just do Yes. And I think that's it. So it should finish at midnight, uh, so 60 exposures, uh, we'll see what happens. We've got full, oh sorry, we've got half moon tonight. Uh, the sky is clear though, I'm not too sure if we've got some really high level haze, but the uh, stars don't appear to be as uh, obvious as usual. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, we'll see how it goes and hopefully uh, I can have a better night than I did the other night when I come to stacking the data. So in the meantime, I shall talk to you later. Hey everyone. Okay, so uh, it's now 11 o'clock and uh, the telescope's down heading towards the, the horizon and uh, the quality of the images has uh, started to deteriorate, so I'm going to call an end to the plan. Uh, at the moment, uh, I've done 40, or I'm on number 45 uh, of four minute exposures, but I dare say the last few uh, I'll probably uh, discard. Uh, I've also noticed that the guiding is also starting to deteriorate slightly. Exposure finished. It's uh, down to 0 0.73. And, Dithering uh, started. The signal to noise ratio has dropped uh, as we're heading down into the horizon. So on that note, I'm going to call this one quits and uh, we will uh, take a look in the morning and see what we've got. Uh, the last image there, you can still clearly see uh, M27 uh, and this is with the uh, Bader uh, UH uh, filter. Dithering uh, so finished. We'll, uh, we'll see how it is in the morning. I shall speak to you then. Hi again. Okay, uh, this is today I uh, took all the data off the, the laptop that I captured last night and uh, took the managed to capture 45 frames of which I discarded five from uh, towards the end. As I said at the end of last night's uh, section, uh, the telescope was heading down towards the higher horizon, so the quality of the images was starting to deteriorate and uh, the guiding was starting to uh, go bad, shall we say. Uh, so anyway, of the 40 images, uh, I've taken a sample here, and uh, the one on the left was from the night of uh, the 24th, 
and uh, the one on the right was one of the ones from last night, which was at 240 seconds uh, with a gain of 100, and that was using the Bader uh, UHC-S uh, Nebula filter. And uh, it doesn't look too bad, and it's not as fuzzy uh, as compared to the other night. Uh, however, uh, yet again, uh, I still had issues trying to stack uh, the 40 images uh, last night. Uh, I think uh, the guiding, sorry about the guiding, the, uh, the focus is still out. You can see the stars are still pretty fuzzy uh, on last night's image. And uh, Deep Sky Stacker was just having none of it again. Uh, despite finding uh, the stars, uh, I think 40, 50 stars, something like that, uh, when I adjust the star threshold, uh, it still didn't want to uh, stack uh, any more than just one frame. So I gave up with Deep Sky Stacker. I tried a couple of the others again, uh, but again, uh, they weren't working. So yeah, I've still got issues uh, that I need to, to dig into further. Uh, as I said last night as well, uh, early on, I did check the collimation. Uh, it appears to be okay on the scope. Uh, so the only other thing uh, that I'm leading to is uh, either I'm not focusing it correctly, uh, maybe need to, to look into that in more detail, or uh, but guiding issues uh, still. Uh, and I suspect that uh, I'm using uh, too small a focal length in the guide scope uh, compared to uh, the main focal length of the main telescope. Uh, I think the recommendations from looking around the net is around about a ratio of 3 to 1. Uh, so for the edge 11 on full focal length, that's 200, uh, sorry, 2,800 uh, millimetres and my guide scope is a 60 mm uh, guide scope with a focal length of 280, so that's a 10 to 1 ratio uh, with the guiding. Uh, so that's probably not helping much. So uh, I'm going to have a look at uh, swapping over the guide scope to my AR90S, which is a 500 millimetre guide scope and uh, we'll see how that goes. And then uh, also, uh, once I get the 0.7 reducer, uh, once uh, it gets delivered, whenever that's going to be, uh, it's still on back order with a few other things, uh, then we'll see how the guiding goes there. So anyway, uh, I took the uh, image uh, from the right. Uh, yeah, the, there you can see the color chart at the top for the, the filter. So this is the two inch filter, the batter filter, see uh, it's got the, the rose uh, tint to it uh, for the various colour bands and that's just sitting in the ZWO filter drawer and uh, so I took that image anyway and I took it across to GIMP, uh, just a single ex exposure, uh, cleaned it up a bit and uh, this is what I've, uh, I've managed to come up with uh, just for that single exposure. Uh, and the thing that I never noticed the uh, the other day is right in the centre uh, of the of the nebula, uh, you can actually see uh, a little blue dot, uh, which is the white dwarf, uh, I believe, uh, for that uh, that nebula. So uh, another uh, frustrating uh, day trying to deal with the data from last night. Uh, I'm surprised that I'm still having these issues with Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, I've managed to get it to stack. Uh, images that have been in a, a much worse state uh, in the past when I was using or when I first started out with the, the 8 inch Newtonian. Uh, so I really struggle to understand why it's not doing some form of stacking uh, on those 40 images uh, when it can see uh, the stars uh, there uh, despite adjusting the various settings. And uh, it's obviously not limited to Deep Sky Stacker uh, as the other stacking applications uh, aren't working. Either. So uh, it's certainly frustrating as I've said, uh, certainly areas for improvement there without a doubt and uh, uh, give me something to, to investigate further. So anyway, on that note, that's it uh, for last night's uh, imaging session. Uh, as usual, I appreciate any feedback in the, uh, the comments, uh, any suggestions uh, on how to improve and uh, any uh, recommendations uh, around guide ratios, uh, filters, etc., or any other processing tips uh, for Pixinsight or GIMP, etc., uh, we can see where 
where it goes from there. So on that note, thank you very much, and uh, I'll speak to you later.